from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Score on Business. Hey, welcome to Score on Business. I'm Pete Hendricks, a serial entrepreneur and your host for this week. So, SCORE provides low-cost seminars most Saturdays. The, the topics are things like um, grow your business, start your business, accounting in QuickBooks, writing a business plan, and the pricing is usually $20 to $30 for those. Then also, we have an exciting event on September 23rd from 7.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at Lipscomb University. No charge for the event, which will cover topics such as legal issues, business modeling, marketing, and funding. Information on all these events is available on our website scorenashville.org check for the tab on uh, on calendar and events and then finally one thing I do want to mention every once in a while the National Federation of Independent Businesses is actually based here in Nashville I am a member and they take the dues that those of us who are members pay to work on our behalf at both um, local and, and federal government and so as entrepreneurs, we don't really have time for that. So, hey, let's get over to our guest here. Brett Holiday is coming back. Um, he was here last week. So, Brett shared on last week's show that he left a 25-year career in corporate America to provide CI CFO services for small and medium companies. He grew up in an entrepreneurial family and felt pulled to assist those types of organizations. And Brett, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and so, um, Brett, with a, there are, you know, you're a group of very seasoned, you know, 25-year veterans, whether it's with B2B, who you're with, or one of the other companies, and what you all are doing, small companies cannot afford a true CFO most of the time, and so you all work with them on a part-time basis to achieve the things that they probably don't have internal resources. Is that a thumbnail sketch? Yes, that is a very good description. Okay. It, it makes sense when a company yeah. is smaller to not hire a full-time CFO because it's yeah. not cost-effective. Right. As we all know, CFOs are expensive. They, exactly. So someone like myself or someone who's in a role such as yeah. mine can go into one of these companies, be a uh, an affordable alternative right. and tailor to the to the needs of the company, whether that be a day a week or right. uh, you know, even a few hours a month, or depending a on the side or, or yes, or a project temporary yeah. basis. So it, it 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 really is is more of an economical uh, option right to to a company uh, okay. in, that, in that role. Yeah. So well, I think about um, I think about my business. So we we are not in a position to hire a CFO. Yet, um, as you know, I'm trying to figure out what it would cost to provide a new service, and that is something where ultimately I will get some help um, because I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to look at it from a strategic point of view, from a financial perspective, and how do you know how to price something if you don't know what it costs? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, the the first step is is to gather all of your cost. Yeah. Uh, know what your overhead's going to be. Know what your salaries are going to be. Know what your direct costs are going to be. Determine what what your revenue uh, is expected to be to to the best estimate that you that you can make. Mm -hmm. uh, you you then take that data and make sure that your pricing to a point that you're not losing money right that you're that you're making money at a at a reasonable profit margin right. uh, again to serve your customers yeah okay so tell us a story about using financial statements correctly this is a this is a fun area for me uh, we talked about last time how how entrepreneurs uh, is not uncommon for financial statements to be neglected for uh, a number of reasons. They don't have time, they don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, they may not uh, be as familiar with it. So 
one of the things uh, that I've seen fairly often is financial statements that are just wrong. Mm -hmm. They're just numbers on a piece of paper. Those are not usable. Right. The, uh, the first step there is to make sure that those financials are correct. And, and that would meaningful. be, that CFO level work, like that there could be, um, there could be a, an accounting person or maybe even more than one on staff, but part of having the part-time CFO is to make sure it's set up correctly and that the statements are done correctly. That, that's correct. Uh -huh. And uh, once that is fixed, yeah. In an ideal world, you can then train the rest of the staff on how yeah. to how to handle that, how to do that. Right. So once you once you have correct financial statements, tell us about what how to use them. Tell us a story about a a company or someone you've worked with where that demonstrates how to use those financial statements. This, this also is, uh, is one of the biggest reasons I got into this line of work. I, just, yeah. I have a passion for helping companies maximize their success, maximizing their profits. Mm -hmm. Once the financial statements are correct, it's important to use them to be that management tool. Mm -hmm. Correct financial statements are, are of most use when you can compare them to other reference points, such as a budget, mm -hmm. such as uh, prior year results, whenever possible. Industry averages. Mm -hmm. Prepare a variance analysis mm -hmm. with that data. Now, when you have a variance, there could very well be a good reason for that. But a business owner needs to understand why that. Uh, it, it could be that, uh, that estimates or assumptions that were made in preparing the budget, for example, mm -hmm. have changed as time has gone on. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be taken into account. In that case, a budget variance does make sense. So at that point, you can then do what's known as a forecast, adjust the budget. Well, so it's, it's almost like the, you know, if you think about, um, going somewhere in a boat. They have these navigational beacons um, at places. So financials where that are indicating either that the budget was overshot or sales weren't enough or you're losing money, it's almost like a navigational beacon to say, hey, um, we see this, we see that we're headed in the wrong direction, so let's figure out what's going on here so we can correct direction. Whether it's from um, failing to keep a handle on expenses, whether it's uh, failing to understand cost and needing to make an adjustment there, whether it's any of the multitude, whether um, there was too much overtime or whether there was uh, you know, any of the things that can impact. There are explanations for any of yeah. those variances. The important thing is to research and understand those. Right. Again, they could be positive, they right. could be negative, and you could uh, you could uncover something as an accounting error. Yeah. Which then has your your whole financial situation misstated. Right. So I like your example about uh, uh, being on a boat. Yeah. Also works with being in a car, being on a plane. Yeah. Uh, if you uh, if you are driving without a, a destination in mind, mm -hmm. you've got the activity, you don't have the goals, right. you, don't have, you don't have the end in mind. Okay, so imagine for a moment that an entrepreneur is thinking about introducing a new product or service. What would strategic financial input look like? Uh, first, it's important to make sure all of the information is available. Okay, and hey, we let's take a break. Okay, a break right quick, and then we'll we won't have to interrupt you in the middle okay. of the question. Hey, we'll be right back. Remember, scorenashville.org.